How do you guys manage your codebase? With all the different versions laying around, if you're anything like I was, you've probably got a bunch of different folders sitting on your PC with each version. When you wanna transfer it to a laptop, you've probably got a bunch of USB sticks. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a better way and that is by using Git. It's a magical tool which is gonna solve all of your problems and it is the industry standard when it comes to source control. It's used across pretty much every single company in the industry, so it's incredibly important to know. In this video, I'm gonna run you through some of the very basic operations. We're going to create a repository, do a git pull, a git push, we're gonna create a branch, and we're also going to create a pull request, which are all things you will need to do in a professional environment. Let's jump into it. We're gonna do a quick Google search for git download. We'll click on the first link and select the download for the operating system that you have. If you have Windows, for example, there is a 16-bit version installer that you can click through and run through the installation prompts. Once you have installed Git on your system, we're going to open up a terminal window, type in git dash dash help, and if you see something like this, this means you have Git installed correctly. Now we can go ahead and create our first Git repository. A Git repo is just where you store all of your software and scripts for a particular application or project. There are many different companies that offer Git repositories. There's GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, CodeCommit, a range of different options. For this tutorial, we're gonna go with GitHub. If you don't already have an account, sign up and create one. It's completely free to do so. Once you are logged into the portal, you should see something like this. We're gonna go ahead and either click on this button here that says new, or we can click the drop down and go new repository. We're gonna go ahead and create a repo, give it a name, You can then select if you want it to be public or private. We're gonna go private. Now, please be aware, if you do select public, be extremely careful not to commit anything that shouldn't be public knowledge, such as secrets and API keys. If you commit any of those in a public repo, you're asking for trouble. Next, we're gonna go add a readme file, and we won't worry about these for now. Go ahead and create a repository. And there we have it. We have our first repo up and running. Now we can go ahead and interact with this directly through the user interface. We can go add a new file, for example, give it a name, and commit your changes. Added a new file. We're just gonna give it a brief description and commit. Now we see our second file is there. That's great and all, but how do we get that repository onto our local PC or laptop? Well, for that, we're gonna click back into our main folder. And from this screen, we're gonna click the little drop down, and we're gonna copy this command. This is a direct link to your GitHub repo. So we're gonna copy that, open up a terminal window. I'm just gonna make a temporary directory because I'm gonna delete this after the tutorial. Once you're in the correct folder structure, you want to type git space clone space, and you wanna paste the link to your GitHub repo. Now, if we do a ls, we can see that it is downloaded to our local PC. The first time you run this command, you will be prompted for a username and password. Just chuck in your GitHub credentials and it will connect and download the repo for you. And we're just gonna quickly show you what this looks like through my documents. And there we have our repo with the file we created earlier. Now let's go ahead, make a change on our local PC and we're gonna push that back up to our repository. I'm gonna open up VS Code you can open up any file editor that you like, Notepad, Notepad++. I just like using VS Code. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new file within our repository. Example from PC. And I'm just gonna say example from PC. Save the file. Now, we have a file on our local PC that is not synced up to our server. If I go back to GitHub and refresh the page, nothing is there. My new file does not exist. So we have to first commit our changes and then 
push them up to our repo. We're going to CD into our example demo repo, like so. Now, the first thing we have to do, we're gonna run a git space status. This is gonna show us that we have a new file that we are not tracking. To track it, we are going to do git space add, and we're gonna do start, which just says, add everything to our commit list. If we do git status, it is now green and says new file next to it. We have now added it to the list of changes that we wanna push up to our server. The next thing we have to do is do a git commit, which is where we append a message to it. Whenever you make any changes in git, you need to append a message just so you can go back in time and track why certain things were done. It looks like this. So we do git space commit, dash M, and we give it a message. Now, in a professional environment, you're generally using JIRA to track your work, and so you would typically put your JIRA ticket number in there, just so that when you go back through the file history, you can relate it back to the piece of work that was done and understand the history and flow of why that change was made. Now, we're gonna give a brief description, so we're just gonna do added a new file from our local PC, end quote, and hit enter. We now have that new file ready to go with the message attached to it. The final step in the puzzle is to type git space push hit enter. This will push it up to your server. You should see some output like this, which means it is pushed up successfully. So if you go back to your repo, refresh the page, you will now see your new file there. Now, if we click this commit button here, this will show us every single change that has been made within that repository. And here we can see that message that we applied earlier, added a new file from our local PC. We can click into it and we can see the exact change that was made. Now, remember earlier when we created that new file from the UI? We're gonna go ahead and create another one from the UI. So we'll call it example UI, ah, example, UI-2, gonna commit changes, and commit changes. Now, the first time we did this, we did a git clone to our local PC, which cloned everything at that point in time. So when we first created this one, because that already existed when we did the git clone, it included that and we had it on our local PC. However, We've already got our repository on our PC, and after we've had that, we created this file. So when we go back to our PC and we do a ls, that example UI-2 does not exist. The way we can get the file from the server back down to our PC is git space pull. Now if we do an ls, we can see that second file there. It's a handy thing to know because quite often in a professional environment, you'll be working with a range of different engineers or developers who will be pushing all of their different code changes. So you should do a git pull on any repository that you're working on because others may be pushing changes to that as well. Okay, so far we've set up git, we've created our repository, we've created a couple of files, we've done git pull, git push, git commit. The next thing I want to teach you guys, and this is something incredibly important because it's how we work in a professional environment, and that is the concept of a feature branch. Think of your Git repository as a tree. You have this concept of main. Now, main is your single source of truth, and I want you to think of that as your tree trunk. This is what keeps your source control or your tree up in place. Everything that's ready to be released or in production should be within your main branch. Now, we have this concept called feature branches. And these are small little branches that have everything in main plus little features that you're working on. Let's say you're working on a feature to add two-factor authentication in. It might take you a couple of weeks. What you would do is you would work on a small little branch to the side. Completely separate from your main branch, other people can still push code to the main part without your unfinished changes breaking things. Branches are used everywhere within the industry and it's how multiple developers can work on the same application at the same time without impeding each other. 
Developer A is working on a branch over here and developer B is working on a separate branch over here. So their changes never affect each other until they get into the main branch. If you're working in a professional environment, you're going to have to use branches. But even if you're a solo developer, it's still sometimes a good idea to do these branches. For example, I was working on a mobile app where I was just putting everything into my main code branch. And I started working on a feature that I didn't quite understand how to implement and it took me probably a good three or four weeks before it was finished. But before I could complete the task, I had found a bug which required an immediate fix. But I couldn't put the fix in because my features weren't working and I broke my code base. I had to back out every single change to my previous working version, do the bug fix and then put it all back in. Had I been working on a feature branch, I could have had that new feature sitting on a branch and do the bug fix separately. It would have saved me a lot of headaches and a lot of time. So even if you're a solo developer, branches can still be handy. If you type in git space branch, it will show you all of the branches that you have. So we currently only have main. What we're going to do is we're going to type git space checkout dash b which is a command we want to create a new branch. We're going to give it a name, so I'm going to type in feature slash 2FA. Now, if we type git branch, we can see that we're on a separate branch. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, 2FA-example. And exactly like before, when we push changes up to our repository, we're going to do a git add star, git commit dash m initial 2fa commit. And then we're going to do a git push. The first time you create a branch and you want to push, you have to then just quickly copy and paste this command. That will push your changes up onto that branch. We'll head back over to GitHub, refresh the page, and we see nothing. There is no 2FA here. And that is because we're looking at our main branch. Instead, we want to click this drop down and select our 2FA feature. Now within here, we can see we've got that extra file, which is extremely handy. Our 2FA code is now completely separate to our main repository. And we can create as many branches as we want. If we want to work on the two-factor authentication feature and 10 other features at a time, we can. Or we can address bug fixes and do anything that we want. All without breaking anything because our code is isolated on its own branch. Now I want to introduce you to the final concept I'm going to teach in this video, and that is pull requests. Pull requests are how we get our code that we put in our branch back into that main branch. We can see this little icon at the top. We're going to go ahead and click compare and pull request. What this is saying is we are going to merge our feature branch back into our main branch. Just like our commit messages, we're going to give it a title and description. It shows us which files have been changed and we're going to click this big green button to create the pull request. This is the pull request screen. You can see in these different tabs, so under commits, we can see all the changes that were made. We can see the files that were changed and there's even a conversation tab. Now, obviously we're a solo developer, so we don't have anyone else to review our changes. But in a professional environment, you would head over to reviewers and add your colleagues in to review your code changes. Your colleagues would typically approve the pull request, or if they were not happy with it, they would add some comments for you to fix up. Once everything's completed, you then go ahead and click Merge Pull Request and Confirm Merge. You can then go ahead and delete that branch. Now if we head over to our code, we are on our main branch and we can see that our two-factor authentication example code has been merged into main and that feature branch no longer exists. So to summarize, Git is an extremely powerful way to source control all of your files, stop copying things to USBs. And seriously guys, this is an extremely important topic, especially for anyone 
who is currently in the industry or wanting to break in. It's used virtually everywhere and having a base understanding is going to help you out tremendously. That's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. I see majority of you guys are not. And so if you enjoyed this and want to see more content like this, you know what to do. As always, have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.